everyone had a great Christmas, and welcome to a very special Lori Wired holiday episode. Today we're taking on one of the classic concurrency problems in computer science, the Santa Claus problem. First, a bit of background. Almost exactly 30 years ago, in 1994, John Trono of St. Michael's College shared a clever exercise. He wanted to illustrate the difficulty of coordinating multiple threads and resource sharing to his students. It happened to be around Christmas time, so he created a problem involving a Santa Claus process, nine reindeer processes, and ten elves. But why does it matter? Parallel computing is a really critical concept in computer science. Back in the day, programmers got speedups for free as every generation of CPU increased in clock speed. Distributed applications were mostly limited to highly specialized environments weather modeling, nuclear simulations, big picture kind of stuff. But as time went on and we entered the multi-core era at the consumer level, programmers had to find ways to utilize multiple threads to speed things up. Creating a tricky scenario is a great way to get software engineers to practice application threading while accounting for difficult edge cases. Here's the full problem, and I've got a few reindeer and elves here to illustrate it. Santa Claus sleeps in his shop at the North Pole. To make sure he gets plenty of rest, he only wakes up for two kinds of events. The reindeer are currently on vacation, and if all nine reindeer come home from vacation, the last one wakes up Santa. This event takes priority over all other events. Think of it like they're waiting in an airplane hangar. Once all nine reindeer are in the hangar, they're ready to go, and this wakes up Santa. The second event that can wake up Santa involves the elves. The elves are currently building toys, and there are ten of them here. If three of them have a problem making a toy, they can wake up Santa for help. Any time an elf has a problem making a toy, they enter into the panic room. Imagine there is a motion detector that activates when an elf walks through the door. Once the motion detector counts three elves in the panic room, the alarm goes off to wake up Santa. The panic room can hold a maximum of three elves. There have been numerous papers written about solutions to this problem in many different programming languages. The original solution was written in Java by the author. A few years later, Ben Ari of the Wiseman Institute of Science proposed a more robust solution in Ada, making use of its strong concurrency primitives. Even later, in 2003, Nick Benton, a researcher at Microsoft in Cambridge, created a solution in polymorphic C-sharp, which is a special extension of C-sharp with more constructs based on join calculus. As of today, it appears that no one has actually attempted and published a valid solution in C++. I think I'll give it a shot. In a modern context, the most logical way to solve this is via multithreading. Let's consider each reindeer as its own thread, each elf as its own thread, and even Santa as a separate thread. When these threads are created, they're passed a function as the entry point. Think of it like a to-do list. Each thread has its own job to do. Santa gets a Santa thread function, the reindeer get a reindeer thread function, and of course the elves get an elf thread function. From these functions, we can spin up as many threads as we want. To recreate the original problem, we'll have a single Santa thread, ten elf threads, and nine reindeer threads. Every thread works independently, even if they are otherwise the same type. Alright, before we talk about how to coordinate this mess of elves, reindeer, and Santa threads, let's give a quick refresher on synchronization primitives. A mutex, or mutual exclusion for short, is like a lock that you put on resource that multiple threads want to use. Going back to our analogy, let's look at the panic room for the elves. The motion detector at the door can only detect a single elf walking through at a time. If multiple elves try to squeeze through at the same time, we might not get an accurate reading. But what if we made the door smaller, so only one elf could get through at a time? In programming terms, this would be known as a mutex. We're limiting the number of threads, elves, that can access a particular resource. If two elves try to squeeze in simultaneously, they won't fit. Looking over at my C++ code, we use the door, the mutex, to protect the global counter variable called elf count. Elf count then keeps track of how many elves are currently experiencing an issue and needs Santa. 
Each thread needs to be able to safely increment and check the value of elf count. The mutex lock prevents that portion of code, technically known as the critical section, from being executed by more than one thread at once. This way, we don't have multiple elf threads trying to modify and check the count value simultaneously. We also use the mutex in a similar way to protect the reindeer count variable to keep track of how many reindeer have returned from vacation. Let's take a look at another highly useful synchronization primitive, the semaphore. Coming from the Greek sema meaning sign and phoros meaning carrying, semaphore quite literally means sign carrier. Earlier, we used a narrow door, a mutex, to ensure only one elf could modify our counter at a time. But sometimes we need to control access to spaces that can hold multiple threads, like our panic room that fits three elves. A semaphore helps us do exactly this. It maintains a count of available spaces, letting threads in until we hit our limit. In our analogy, it's kind of like having a sign in front of the panic room that says how many spaces are left. We start out with three, and as more elves enter in, that number starts to count down to zero, in which case we wake up Santa. Taking a look at the C++ code again, we use a semaphore called only elves, setting the initial count to three. When an elf has a problem, they call only elves.acquire, which decrements the counter of the semaphore by one, signifying that one more slot has been filled. Once all three slots are full, any other thread attempting to take a slot is blocked until one of the other slots is released. Remember, the third elf in the room is a bit special because they are the one that is supposed to wake up Santa. Once Santa wakes up and is done helping the elf and his two friends, he calls only elves.release on each of them freeing up a slot. The release function technically increments the semaphore counter by one to signify that a slot has now opened up in the panic room. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're curious, you can look at the code on GitHub, and the reindeer follow a very similar mutex and semaphore logic for the airplane hanger. Now that we have all of our pieces together, let's look at the demo in action. I've written up a small UI so it's easier to tell what's going on. So let's execute our code bring up our program. Right now we have our reindeer on the left and our elves on the right, and currently the elves are all just going out and making toys. But now reindeer are returning back from vacation one by one, and they're entering the airplane hangar. So Santa's still asleep, but now we've reached three elves needing help, so now Santa wakes up. So he's going to go through and help the elves, and once they're done, he goes back to sleep. But now we've reached nine reindeer, so he's woken up again, and he's going to go take the reindeer out and deliver presents, and then go back to sleep again now that they've finished delivering them. And our reindeer count goes back down because they're all going back out on vacation. But here's the twist that many programmers missed for years. Although it looks otherwise correct, there's actually a subtle bug in our current implementation. Even the author of the original paper, John Trono, didn't catch it. It wasn't until a few years later, Ben Ari of the Wiseman Institute of Science found a logical flaw. Remember our airplane hangar? There's an issue with how the reindeer and Santa coordinate. When the last reindeer arrives at the hangar, they're supposed to do two things. Wake up Santa, and then wait in the hangar until Santa's ready to take off. Here's where it gets tricky. Santa might be so quick to wake up that he starts letting out other reindeer of the hangar before the last reindeer has even gotten inside. It's a miscommunication between the door counter, reindeer count, and the actual spaces in the hangar, reindeer sem. Santa thinks, all the reindeer are here, open the doors, but the last reindeer is still trying to get through. When they do get in, that last reindeer is now taking up a space, but didn't get counted properly. It's like having a phantom reindeer physically present in the hangar, but otherwise invisible to the counter. This creates a knock-on effect where when the reindeer return, we can never get to nine reindeer since we're missing track of one. Here's how it looks in the code. We end up with a reindeer sem.acquire in the reindeer thread and a reindeer sem.release in the Santa thread that cause the reindeer count and the reindeer sem to get out of sync. Let's say Santa sets the reindeer counter to zero, then releases all the reindeer before the last reindeer calls reindeer sem.acquire. 
Once the other reindeer start the next cycle of taking up slots, then the last reindeer will decrement the reindeer sem. So now, even though it takes a slot in the reindeer sem semaphore and starts waiting, the reindeer counter isn't accounting for it waiting. The reindeer are now deadlocked since reindeer counter can never again reach 9. We're permanently missing one of our reindeer count. So what's the fix? Going back to our blocks, imagine we give the last reindeer their own special entrance door. Instead of using the same door as everyone else, they get a dedicated door that only the last reindeer and Santa can coordinate with. This way, no matter who's faster, Santa or the last reindeer, they'll always stay in sync with each other. In the code, this special door is a separate semaphore. Instead of acquiring a regular slot, he acquires the last reindeer sem slot. Santa now releases the last reindeer separate from the others. Now, the last reindeer can't get stuck because they aren't sharing the same reindeer sem semaphore. Because of the counting way these semaphores work, it doesn't matter whether Santa or the last reindeer is faster. If the reindeer acquires first, the last reindeer sem is decremented by one, but Santa will release this once he gets there. If Santa releases first, the last reindeer sem is incremented by one, but the reindeer thread will acquire once he gets there. This fixes it because the last reindeer sem will always end up as zero by the end of delivering presents. Now we can run our corrected C++ demo, and it may not look much different from the outside, but this is a more robust solution that should never enter a deadlock state. So that's the Santa Claus problem. We just saw how subtle concurrency bugs can be and how important it is to synchronize threads properly. Even decades later, this classic computer science problem is extremely beneficial for demonstrating synchronization primitives. In modern development, concurrency is all around us, whether it's handling requests on a web server or parallelizing a massive AI training job. Understanding these core concepts is invaluable. So what are you waiting for? Go try out this new problem yourself, maybe even choose a different language. I hope you enjoyed my C++ solution, and as always, the source code is available for you on my GitHub. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about concurrency. Thanks again for joining me on this special holiday episode, and until next time, Lori Wired out. <laughs>